Similar to a data map, which converts a document from one format to another, the message shape overwrites the document data and builds it into a message to be sent into the body of an email. So we'll want to extract dynamic content from each document to build a custom report message to be included in the email. By default, the message shape generates a free flow text message from dynamic or static inputs, similar to how we created the SQL code earlier. And it converts documents passing through it into new data. And it's often paired with a mail connector for advanced notifications and to create placeholders for runtime parameters. So now I'm going to walk through exercises 22 and 23. So we're going to configure the message shape and then test the process. I'll also demonstrate our third and additional challenge, formatting the output to email. All right, so we're configuring a message shape. So again, similar to how the map shape converts the document from one format to another, and the message shape is gonna overwrite the document data and build it into a message that we can send in the body of an email. So following exercise is gonna extract dynamic content from each document to build a custom report message. So the first thing we're gonna do is under our execute shapes, we're gonna pull a message shape onto our process canvas. All right, so under the option, we're gonna we're going to check the box that says combine documents into a single message. And in the message shape, we're gonna write prospect, and then we're gonna do the curly bracket one, curly bracket closed on, curly bracket two, curly bracket. And then we're gonna enter down. So we're gonna go into the second, and then we're gonna add two, three, four, five, six. So this is just how we're breaking up the line for it. And then we're gonna hit enter again and go down to the third, and we're gonna leave the third row blank. So we're gonna add a variable. So we're going to add a parameter to this. The parameter type is going to be profile element. It's going to be a database. For the profile, we're going to choose our, our query customer by modified date. And then the element that we're selecting is the customer ID. So under statement fields, customer ID, and then hit OK. So you can seeing that parameter value of one that we're referencing up here in the message shape, we just set the parameter for. So now that we set one, we need to set the second. So we're gonna add a second parameter value. This one is going to be a type of date and time. It's going to be mass date of MM, this date type. It'll be in your activity guide. Make sure you get the right date type there. And then the date type is going to be a current date. So again, date and time, month, month, day, day, year, current date. Now you're seeing we've set the second variable that we're referencing in the message. So we can hit OK, return to our process canvas. That finishes exercise 22. Now we're getting to exercise 23. So the message shape is now constructed and the mail connector is enabled to send messages to your email address. So executing the process is gonna confirm that the records are extracted and that they're updated in Salesforce. And then the process will then email formalized message. So to do this dual action, we have to use the branch shape for it. So under logic, we're going to take a branch shape and we're gonna drag and drop that onto our canvas. It's gonna ask us how many branches we want. We're going to have two. So we are going to take our database and we're going to take that away from the map. We're going to put the branch in. We're going to connect our start shape to our branch. And then the first branch is going to go down the map to the Salesforce stop. The second branch is going to go to message shape. Then it's going to go to the mail connector. And then we'll need to add another stop sign to this. So again, so we took, we added a branch shape onto our process canvas. The first branch shape routed from the start shape is going through our map, Salesforce connection, stop sign. And then the second branch is gonna be message shape, mail connector, stop sign. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna execute the process by testing it in test mode. So we'll run a test. It's gonna ask us to save. We're gonna run it on our test atom cloud. Once the process runs to execution and test, you can navigate to your inbox and see the results. So you'll get an email saying that prospect gene point 3450 closed on today's date, and then prospect edge communication 6000 closed on today's date. That finishes exercise 23. So we're also gonna do additional challenge three, which is formatting the output to email. When sending email notifications, dynamic content can be used in the subject or to send messages to the variable set of two addresses. So this exercise uses the set property shape to make the email subject dynamic containing each database record's name. So that's what we're going to do here in additional challenge number three, which is formatting output to email. So we're going to add a set property shape to our process canvas. 
And then we're going to configure a profile element parameter type that'll dynamically set the male subject by name. So we're going to do properties to set. Property type is going to be male. And again, we want this to be subject. And then if we click on male and subject, you'll see we have the option for parameter. We're going to do profile type. It's going to be a database profile. We're going to choose our profile type, which is going to be our query customer by modified date. And then we're going to choose the element that we want for it. So it's going to be the statement fields name. Perfect. And so now you see that we formatted the mail subject set property shape and the database profile parameter. And the next thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to modify the message shape. So before we had the documents all combined into a single message. Now what we want to have happen is all of the documents sent in separate email messages. So we're going to have to uncheck this. Now what we can do is take some time now to complete exercise 22 and 23 as well as the additional challenge laid out.